Originally, Street Fighters were created by riders who modified their Super Sport and Super Bike by removing the fairings and clip-ons and put on handlebars and a bigger rear sprocket, which made the bike much more comfortable and better for street and stunt riding. Well, manufacturers took notice of this growing trend and they created their own production Street Fighters over the years and they have gotten better and better. And for 2020, Street Fighters are absolutely epic and beastly. The king of all Street Fighters currently that wins at every shootout is the Aprilia Tuano V4 1100. However, those days are probably coming to an end because MV Agusta created the MV Agusta Brutale 1000 with well over 200 horsepower that is poised to overtake the Aprilia, but Ducati one-upped MV Agusta and created the V4 Street Fighter with well over 214 horsepower that is poised to beat the MV Agusta and Aprilia. Then of course you got Kawasaki that created the ZH2 which is trickled down from the H2 that is probably going to be an epic beast as well, but we'll see. Then of course you got Yamaha with their MT-10 and the BMW S1000R, but KTM is not to be outdone either. They made some serious changes to their 1290 Super Duke R. And as a lot of you guys know, that bike had the most torque at over 100 pounds feet of torque. Well, for 2020, they made some serious changes to that beastly 1301 cc V-twin engine and transmission, all new steel trellis frame and upgraded suspension, and much more. Stay tuned. I'm going to tell you all about it, and I'm going to give my opinion on which bike is going to stomp out the competition. Let's go for a ride. Hey, hey. watching cycle cruises all on one motorcycle channel subscribe today continue to leave video suggestions but you may find what you're looking for by visiting my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab my videos and those are a bunch of playlists with all of my videos categorized in them to make it easier for you to navigate through for 2020 ktm decided not to follow ducati's lead and put a ton more power on an already beastly bike but rather further refine the bike and make it lighter weight and better handling. First off, they took the 1301cc 75 degree LC8 engine and made it more efficient with a little bit more power but lighter weight. And they accomplished this by making the engine cases thinner and also revised the water and oil cooler mounts which resulted in a whopping 1.7 pound reduction. Also, they added new top feeder fuel injectors and 56 millimeter throttle bodies for better air fuel ratio, which equates to more stomping torque and better fuel economy. Also, they improved the oil delivery with lightweight aluminum lines and a new RAM air system that runs through the new LED headlight. Also new twin spark ignition and new titanium inlet valves and also new cylinder heads, which incorporate two catalytic converters which is the latest trend to help meet Euro 5 emissions. Also, they added new lightweight pistons and also brand new engine and linkage mounts. So what does all this equate to, you ask? 177 horsepower and 103 pounds feet of balls to the wall stomping torque. In order to utilize all that whopping power, they refined the six-speed gearbox with its quick shifter for quicker shifting times by adding a new spline shaft and bronze copper coating on the shift forks to slicker up for those lightning fast shifts. Another huge change is they have an all-new lightweight chromoly frame and simpler subframe that doesn't require any brackets or attachments. This results in a three times stiffer chassis and saves 4.4 pounds and also they made the swing arm a half inch longer which extends the wheelbase to 58.9 inches and they position the swing arm closer to the output shaft for better control under hard acceleration also they fully revised the front and rear suspension the front now has a lighter fully adjustable wp apex 48 millimeter inverted fork with split function compression and rebound settings and this is attached to a lightweight forged aluminum triple clamp to save even more weight and it has an all new shock WP Apex rear shock with separate oil and gas reservoirs 
and it's fully adjustable with high and low speed adjusters where you can adjust it on the fly. This makes it even more lighter weight and compact. And the new wheels are hot. Newly designed lighter weight wheels wrapped with some Bridgestone Batlax S22 tires. With all this power and agility now, you need some proper stopping power. So they upgraded the brakes to four piston Brembo Stylemas with three 20 millimeter floating discs up front and a single 240 millimeter rear disc. Of course, these brakes are actuated with proper hydraulic brake and clutch levers where you can control it with just one finger. And also they added an amazing new five inch TFT display that's even brighter and more functional with an anti-glare and anti-scratch resistant glass. And of course they added a new menu switch that's even more user friendly and it can be programmed so you can make changes on the fly. And the rider modes have been further revised. They are now less restrictive. However, to fully use the electronic suite on this bike, which is supported by the six axis IMU, you have to pay extra for the performance and track modes to unlock those features on the bike. Personally, I would get the street mode because that allows you to alter the throttle response, wheel slip, and wheelie control. By the way, also they added a brand new 4.2 gallon steel tank that's designed to support the rider at the track and on the street. But as far as the ergonomics, they stayed pretty much the same. What's really awesome about this bike that stands apart from the other Street Fighters for the most part, this has the most upright seating position which makes it a lot more comfortable on the street. Uh, and for 2020, they added a handlebar that has allows you to adjust it to four positions, forward and backward. And also it has a much more comfortable seat for the rider and passenger and adjustable foot pegs that allow you to raise the pegs higher and farther back for aggressive track riding. And also KTM revised the bodywork a bit. It now has all new bodywork which reduces the weight a bit. And it comes in two color designs. I love the all black with the orange frame. I think that looks absolutely amazing. So what do all these changes add up to, you might ask? 15 pounds less weight. So now the bike only weighs 457 pounds wet compared to last year model at 472 pounds wet. That is absolutely amazing, but the price did go up 700 bucks. So now the price is $18,699 and like I said, if you want to buy the performance and track package, that's an additional cost. It'll probably cost you over a thousand bucks. As far as my personal opinion of this new bike, I feel that KTM made some really positive changes to an already fantastic bike. But even at 457 pounds wet, this bike is still a bit portly compared to the new Ducati V4 Street Fighter that only weighs 441 pounds wet uh, and has more power than this bike. Uh, the new V4 Street Fighter has over 214 horsepower, and this bike is still sitting at 177 horsepower. Uh, but this bike has more torque, which I love for the streets. It's got 103 foot-pounds of torque, and this bike has a more upright seating position, which is better for street riding. It's a bit more comfortable, as where the V4 Street Fighter, I believe, has a more sporty riding position. However... These bikes being about the same price, uh, this Super Duke at $18,699, but you have to pay extra for this performance packs at over $1,000 or close to it, uh, you're right there at the same price as a standard V4 Street Fighter that has more power and uh, is much lighter weight and better looking. So in my opinion, the Ducati V4 Street Fighter will be the winner for 2020 for the best Street Fighter. Share your opinions below. I would love to hear from you guys. I want to know what you think of this new KTM and which Street Fighter you think will be the best for 2020. For those of you guys who want to get my gear like this airbag vest to help keep you safe out there, along with my carbon fiber helmet with mirror shield that's ultra lightweight, uh, motors, leather pants, jackets, boots, gloves, you know, all my stuff. I always include links in the description and comment section of my videos or go to my website at cyclecruiser.com and click on the menu tab, my gear. Thumbs up. Check out my playlist for new riders and popular videos. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and check out my other channel, Bug Out Moto, where I customize a van for my motorcycle so I can live in my van with my motorcycle and travel across the country anywhere. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Bug Out Moto.